Welcome back to Our Community, Susie Thomas with Lindsay Jones from Big Brothers and Big Sisters. And you can find out more by going bigs, the numeral four kids dot com, bigs for kids dot coms. And we really, really, really need men. So like I said, some people uh, are intimidated by teens. They don't get social media. <laughs> they don't get all the texting and Snapchat and all that kind of stuff and not, aren't sure how to talk to a teenager, what would you say to this person? Don't be so afraid. Um, Teenagers are just young adults trying to find their way. Um, So I will say that uh, some of the kids that are in our program, uh, we just had one match. It was a 14-year-old boy who was matched with um, a guy who's in his 30s. And he just said, okay, we both like sports. And he was the mentor as a coach. I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. And I think that's the mentality a lot of guys and uh, women need to take on it is they're not so scary and um, they're going to lead by example as well. So um, if you don't like video games, you don't have to play video games with your little. If you want to spend more time outdoors and stuff, that's something we encourage, Mm -hmm. uh, especially if your little is a teenager. Um, Take them to places that they don't experience at home and show them a different way um, of thinking and that grown-up uh, role model personality that they need to see. Mm-hmm. I heard someone say the other night, you know, some people forget about the kids who have parents, that um, foster children, mm-hmm. uh, they get take they get to go to Cedar Point and all these things. But sometimes there's a child who's in, economically their family is not able to take them, um, and they need to be involved with the Big Brother, Big Sister program. Um, but they don't get a chance to go to some of these places. So how fun to just include them on your family's trip to Cedar Point or one of those neat day out things just right. to just bring them along and incorporate them into your daily routine or your monthly whatever. You don't even have to, my goodness, four hours a month is not asking very much. No, it's really not. And you can make a a difference in a child's life in just four hours a month. That is amazing. Just get your head wrapped around that, that that is time well spent. You've got a couple of things coming up. One is Bowl for Kids' Sake, March 2nd and 3rd. Tell us about that. Uh, Bowl for Kids' Sake is our largest (laughs) annual fundraiser. Uh, We do this every year as a national uh, agency. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are planning this year to raise $75,000 for the kids in our Whoa, community. Whoa, how much do we need to raise? <laughs> 75000 is wow. our goal for this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, typically, we do get pretty close to that, or we do reach it, so that's exciting. Um, and we are still looking for teams to sign up. Um, on March 2nd, it's at Atwood Lanes from 5 to 7 p.m. and 7 to 9 p.m. And on March 3rd, it's at Boulevard and Cy Young Lanes from noon to two and two to four. So different locations. Yes. Pick the one that's closest to you. Yep. And whether evening or afternoon works better. Remind us again, say that one more time, where these are and the times and dates. Okay. On March 2nd, it is at Atwood Lanes in Delroy from 5 to 7 p.m. and 7 to 9 p.m. And it's on March 3rd at Boulevard and Cy Young Lanes from noon to two and two to four p.m. Now for, uh, and what's the day look like before we move on? What what kind of thing takes place at this fun Bowl for Kids' Sake? So for Bowl for Kids' Sake, uh, people put teams together and they ask all their friends, their um, company connections to donate to their team. And then they come that day and they turn all their money in. Um, they collect prizes for how much they raised. And then we celebrate with a bowling, um, two games of bowling usually and pizza and pop and all that fun stuff but we do uh, prizes all throughout the day it's really fun it's an upbeat atmosphere and it's a lot of fun to come and experience and do the kids get to bowl as well yes we typically do like to invite some of our matches to bowl Um, some of them do sign up to fundraise with their littles so that's awesome yeah Uh, and then we do also invite some of our families of our waiting littles who don't have bigs to come and participate that day as well okay let's talk about that let's talk about the need how many kids are on a waiting list right now right now we have around 50 kids that are on a waiting list and how many are being served we are serving 300 children right now wow and yet 50 on a waiting list. Yes. 
Um, can you tell us some of the circumstances? Is it primarily because they've lost a parent or someone? You know, sometimes you're worried about some kind of special need. Is a parent incarcerated or those kinds mm-hmm. of things? Um, what are we stepping into? Um, some of our kids on the waiting list, it's just difficult to match um, based on what the family's looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes we get really specific. This is the age group I need and this is the type of person I'm looking for and these types of views are something that we would like to go with. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the time if a kid's on a waiting list it's because we haven't yet found the right mentor to go with the child that would work well with the child that's on the waiting list. Do you have any potential bigs on a waiting list as well, waiting for just the right child? We never end up with bigs <laughs> on the waiting list. <laughs> okay. we'll, always, we'll always find a little that mm-hmm. will work for you. I've been there for three years and I've not yet seen one big on a waiting list. Sometimes people would love to work with a child with special needs of some kind. Is that a possibility? We actually, um, based on our national standards, we can only um, enroll kids with certain disabilities. Mm -hmm. So if they're learning disabilities, then we can work with that. But I believe as far as special needs or, um, or services of that nature, we can't because it's a liability for the mentor, mm-hmm. I guess, just because okay. they would be able to take them out in the community when you're enrolled in our program, and that's not always allowed, I think, in some of those cases. Okay. Homework's got to be a big deal, and I think that's mm-hmm. another intimidating, as I'm trying to think of all the roadblocks <laughs> that someone would put up in their own mind of why they should not do this. I can't. I don't get Common Core, and I couldn't help any child with their homework, and I would feel sorry for any child who would be having me help them with their homework. What would you say to that person? Um, we actually have school-based mentoring programs as well, and then we have the community-based mentoring program. So school-based mentors, they kind of see that, and if they have a question, then we kind of encourage them, the mentors, to go and see if the, sp- the teacher is still at the school, um, and they take the child to talk to the teacher. So that kind of encourages the child to ask the questions that they need to ask. Uh, If you're a community-based big and you're worried about um, the homework at, say, your little is bringing their homework over to your house, I would just encourage you to help them read through um, the instructions and have them do the best they can. And even if you don't think it's right, that's still that completion and that that thorough checking through and they're Mm -hmm. still getting it done. Oh, good advice. That's good. Because yeah, kind of like with your own kids, you're not going to feed them the answers. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to do that with your little as well. Um, so how do we get involved with Bowl for Kids? How do we get signed up? Um, you can sign up online at wwwbowl com. There's a big red register now button. And then it walks you through some pretty simple um, registration steps where you select your bowling alley and your time. Um, And that also sets up some donation pages for you that you can share it on social media sites. Perfect. That's bold-4. Is that a numeral 4 or the word 4? The word 4. Okay, that time it's the word 4, kids. So bold-4, spelled out F-O-R, kids, dot com. com. And that's to sign up to bowl. Or go to bigs, numeral 4, kids, dot com to find out all kinds of more things. Lots happening down in the Dover area with the YMCA. Tell us what's happening. Um, We're very excited to announce that we launched a Building Brotherhood program on January 19th was the first date that they actually had the program. And that program was created uh, to match the men or the boys waiting Mm -hmm. on our list with men in the community. Nice. Um, Boys are the hardest to move off the waiting list because we do have that lack of male mentors coming in. And a lot of times males are skeptical about taking their about taking kids out in the community that aren't theirs. They worry about what people are going to think and they worry about if something's going to be said or speculation may happen of something that could be could happen or something. So we kind of came up with this program as an idea because it offers them a site that they can meet and we have a staff member that will be there um, for the first few times that we'll watch over the program. Um, They're meeting at the YMCA in Dover, um, and they can use all of the facilities while they're there, and they'll meet two times a month. 
Um, so it's a great ap- opportunity to bring men in who've maybe been thinking about it, but they're really afraid of meeting with their little alone or maybe afraid of meeting with their little outside of a controlled environment. You do have to be careful uh, in this day and age and in any day and age, um, but you do put people through a good screening. Mm -hmm. Um, Talk about that process. When a mentor does sign up for the program, they fill out an application. Um, Part of the application is a consent for us to do background checks. Um, And then in order to be a community-based mentor, they also have to have anybody living in their home over 18 um, receives a background check as well. And then um, they are their references are are checked through our um, our agency. Mm-hmm. So they have to give, I believe, four references, and one has to be a prior youth, um, one has to be like a current employer, and the other two are personal references or their wife or um, their significant other that's um, in the picture. Okay. So you're kind of gathering information from all the people that are meaningful in their life. Yes. And then you make the basis based on that. So their file is approved or rejected based on standards that each big has to meet and based on the background check that we receive. Any other measures that are taken to assure the safety of both a volunteer and of that child? Um, Both the volunteer and child will go through a home inspection. Um, The volunteer can choose not to have the little in their home. That is completely up to them. And they have to be matched, I believe, for at least three months before they're able to take the little back to their house at all. And they have to call um, and talk to the mentoring specialist about Mm -hmm. what they're doing, how did it go, um, that type of thing. And they can decide at any point that they don't want the little. So say they decided that they could have the little in their home and then they start to feel uncomfortable about it, then they can change that and they can make it so they don't take the little to their home. You you Um, really have it down to a science because big brothers and big sisters has been around for such a long time. I'm even surprised that people are concerned because do they wear T-shirts or just say, you know, uh, big brothers, big sisters, so that people know who you are, what you're doing, and why you're with this child? Uh, We do have shirts that we provide to our bigs and littles on the first day that they're matched. Um, And we have match cards that we give to the big and the little that has each other's information on it, um, an emergency contact number, and an agency phone number. So that way they have that with them when they're together. If something would happen Mm medical-wise that needs handled, then they know who they can contact. And I didn't mean to cut you off as you were answering my safety question. What (laughs) what else did you want to say there? Um, I was going to say that the littles and the parents are also um, put through an interview process as well. So... Obviously, we're not running background checks on our littles, but we do get um, summaries as far as, like, if they are seeing a psychologist or anything, we get those summaries, and we um, get reports from the school and um, more information about the littles even before they're accepted as well. So a little has to be accepted, and a big has to be accepted before they enter into the program. And then it's cute. It's like a little match game where you kind of do almost like the – I'm trying to think of those speed dating things where people go through and they meet each other and and they're doing it now in selecting volunteers for organizations. And then this is a great way to also find two people that just click as far as a big and a little. Um, I knew we would run out of time too quickly. All right, let's give the websites one more time. Bigsforkids.com or bowl hyphen for kids. Dot com and uh, go there for all the information. Lindsay Jones with Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Thanks for all you do in our community. Thank you for having me.